It's a great pleasure for me as Chief Executive in the National Unity Government of Afghanistan to be here today at the opening of International London Conference on Afghanistan to reaffirm our commitments, unveil our reform agenda for Afghanistan's self-reliance and to renew bonds of partnership. I convey our deep appreciation to Foreign Secretary Hammond and the Government of the United Kingdom for making today's gathering possible. I am equally grateful to all heads of delegations in attendance representing a dedicated community of friends and partners. Your commitment to improve conditions in my war torn nation over the last decade is very much appreciated by the Afghan people as it continues to enhance the equality of life for our citizens. After 9-11, we converged in a partnership to combat terrorism, stabilize Afghanistan, but soon realized that in order to avoid past errors caused by sudden disengagement in early 90s, we also needed to rebuild a state, relaunch economy, and provide good governance and rule of law. Thus, the mission took on a more comprehensive and critical character, requiring more, requiring more resources and expertise. While there have been significant achievements in all fields, and the indicators are very promising we are still at a distance from being in a comfort zone. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we meet today at a defining moment in our transition to a self-reliant nation that is more in charge of its destiny than any other moment in the past 35 years. We come to London as a nation more unified, as a government fully committed. We are looking forward and ready to embark on a new decade of partnership with the international community. For the most part of this year, we experienced a vibrant electoral process that saw millions of Afghan, Afghans from all walks of life attending a spirited campaign and public rallies at a scale never seen before in our history. They did so in order to have their voices heard to determine their political destiny, and above all, to reaffirm their solemn commitment to consolidating democratic values and practices in our country. Despite a long and complex electoral process, Afghans demonstrated political maturity, patience, fortitude, and eventually came together under the umbrella of a government of national unity supported by the vast majority of voters. It is rekindled a spirit of solidarity to strengthen our national interest. President Ghani and myself signed the political agreement which led to the formation of national unity government. We emphasize that our success depends on the implementation of the agreement. As part of a wide-ranging plan, we have agreed to reform our electoral law, laws and institutions, convene a lawyer jirga, and make sure that our democracy delivers and functions according to norms and standards that are credible and acceptable. We are in the process of forming a com competent and accountable cabinet of ministers. We will work as a team to implement our national agenda to enable Afghanistan to deal effectively with the challenges we face and to enable our people to live peaceful and dignified lives as we promised them during our campaigns. Ladies and gentlemen, beyond our political stability, we clearly recognize that our security and prosperity are linked directly to our success in fighting corruption ensuring good governance and shaping a society where the rule of law prevails. 
we have clearly heard the voices of Afghan civil society demanding elimination of corruption, strengthening transparency and accountability, good governance, freedom of expression, and an end to all forms of violence against women and children. We are committed to deliver a carefully crafted, realistic national reform agenda as presented to you today. Our experience shows that an enabling environment for our private sector is critical to our economic growth and well-being. That said, we are looking forward to tapping into the full potentials offered by our geogra geography, geology, and demography. We welcome the 11 private sector reform priorities presented yesterday at the event and express our full commitment to ensure their implementation. Specifically on corruption, we will work to eliminate this menace at the every level, knowing that a competent and accountable administration is an urgent demand of our people and precondition for a healthy, stable society. Let there be no doubt we will take clear, decisive, and time-bound measures to honor our commitments in this area, including those under the 2012 Tokyo Mutual Accountability Framework. We also emphasize the Tokyo Framework's principles of reciprocity. As we work to strengthen governance in our institutions, at the national and subnational levels, we anticipate our international partners meeting their shared, commit shared commitments, particularly in relation to the alignment of aid with national priority programs and provision of on-budget support. Meeting these commitments are essential for Afghanistan's development and economic growth. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, in about three weeks' time, we will complete another milestone with the full successful completion of security transition, which commenced in June 2011. Thanks to the support and contributions of the many nations comprising NATO-led ISAF Afghan National Security Forces, are now, Afghan National Security Forces are now confidently in charge of the safety and defense of our people nationwide. We thank NATO for its long-term commitment to supporting our armed forces beyond the transition period, as emphasized in Chicago, Wales, and again yesterday at the NATO foreign ministers meeting in Brussels. In fact, that's the day before yesterday. Uh, which President Ghani and I had the pleasure of attending. The signing of bilateral security agreement, the status of force agreement, led to a new phase of our enduring cooperation with the United States of America, NATO, and other supporting nations. Last week's prompt ratification of these agreements by our overwhelming majority in our National Assembly is the manifestation of our people's strong endorsement of these partnerships, which are in line with Afghanistan's national interest. We pay tribute to the lives of many young men and women from NATO ISAF and those in our army and police who made the ultimate sacrifices for the cause of peace, security, and stability in Afghanistan, the region, and the world at large. Their sacrifices can best be honored if we complete the mission they set out to achieve. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, with the political transition behind us, and security transition nearing its end, we are mostly focused on Afghanistan's fateful economic transition, the cost of which has proven to be higher than anticipated. We know that Afghanistan's economic growth vibrancy can be a key catalyst for regional cooperation, connectivity, and integration, leading to a strong, self-reliant economy, which is a key factor for our stability. Our economic agenda will be geared to increase productivity, revenue, boost agricultural development, generate jobs for our citizens, and foster investment opportunities. 
efficient use of our untapped natural resources will be pursued with priority. In this regard, we are keen to complete projects such as Central Asia, South Asia, Kaza 1000, in Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, India project, TAPI, transferring electricity in natural gas across our region. These and other economic initiatives will usher in a new era of cooperation and integration. Dear friends, peace is necessary for my people. Despite the achievements of the past 13 years, it has remained elusive. The National Unity Government regards as a coherent, inclusive, and transparent peace process built on a national consensus a priority issues. In doing so, we will garner support from key stakeholders, among them our National Assembly, civil society, political parties, women representatives, and tribal and religious figures. And let me reaffirm, our peace efforts will be designed to preserve the gains of the past 13 years, including human rights, most notably women's rights. Since this process has regional dynamics, it will require result-oriented support from our, regional, uh, from our region and beyond. Excellencies, we in the National Unity Government have no illusion about the prospect of securing stability, prosperity without continued regional cooperation. Through the Heart of Asia Istanbul process, the regional economic platforms, including the Regional Economic Cooperation Conference on Afghanistan, RICA, we will collaborate with the partners to foster economic prosperity while combating terrorism, extremism, and narcotics, transnational threats that undermines stability in our region. We are gratified with the outcome of the last November's fourth Heart of Asia ministerial meeting in Beijing. Our approach to meeting commitments under the TMF will be holistic, covering all areas of the framework. As such, the protection and promotion of human rights of all Afghans, particularly women and children, will be among our highest priorities. The law on the elimination of violence against women in the National Action Plan for Women of Afghanistan are two instruments which, we, which were enacted to protect women's rights and to empower women in the social, economic, and political spheres of society. Consistent with our Tokyo framework commitments, we will do what necessary to ensure they are implemented steadily and in full. Ladies and gentlemen, our past 13 years, the United Nations had a central role in the coordination of international efforts in Afghanistan. It has enabled substantial progress in various domains. As we enter the transformation decade, we expect the UN to remain a key partner standing in support of our people. To conclude, I would like to express the Government of National Unity's firm conviction that coming decade will be one of reform, progress, and transformation. As I noted earlier, we have entered a threshold in our transition to self-reliant, stable, and prosperous Afghanistan. So long as we remain resolute in our partnership and meet our shared commitment, our common success is inevitable. Thank you all again for your countries and people's continued friendship with the people of Afghanistan. We look forward to a successful conference. Thank you, thank you again, Mr. Secretary. Thanks.